need to one day I'll figure out this one. It's only been five years. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new podcast uh, started today for, uh, well, for America's uh, pop culture magazine, Breaking the Fourth Wall. I'm your host, Chris Wilde, and with me right now, let me go ahead and kill the intro music here. Uh, joining me right now is Mike Amadeus Thorn. Hey, Mike, how's it going, man? Mike, it's can... going very, very well. How are you doing tonight? There he is. All right. Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, right now, it's just going to be me and Mike on the panels uh, for the inaugural episode of Breaking the Fourth Wall. Uh, we will be joined in, hopefully, by uh, Max Mages, as well as maybe even Christopher Weiss. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from him. Unfortunately, this was kind of a last-minute put-together. Uh, for those of you who have never heard our show before, which would be all of you, because all of you have never heard us talk before. <laughs> well... Except for the wrestling fans, and even they didn't want to hear us speak. Um, nope. <laughs> that's true, right? Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to sit here and we're going to talk movies, music, comic books, regular books, video games, and whatever else catches our fancy. Uh, this is a kind of a critique show, but it's going to be a little different because we don't care what the censors say. We will speak our truth and our opinion. We don't get paid by anybody. We don't make any money on this. So if we say we like something, it's because we simply like it. And if we think it's garbage, we're not going to beat around the bush. We're going to tell you straight out it's garbage. Am I right or wrong in that? Absolutely. All right. If somebody will say something's complete and a little trash, what was that? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> well, what for was that? For for you guys for you guys that are not the feedback or something I heard that was... oh I have no idea you know maybe maybe uh, maybe the ghosts in the apartments actually sitting here uh, eating watching the show who knows but uh, oh excuse okay. me had to wet right, well, had to wet the throat a little bit <laughs> so right now we're gonna go ahead and go into our first topic here we're gonna go ahead and go into our first topic here our first topic uh. This being the inaugural show, it's kind of a loose format um, because it's just a couple things that came to my mind, mostly while I was working or whatever else. I listened to a lot of different other podcasts, uh, John Campia, the Jedi Council from Collider, uh, and stuff of that nature. And, I mean, it, it had me questioning a few things. And one of the things that – one hot-button topic that hit me today uh, was actually on Facebook, uh, which was a shared – thing from uh from comicbook.net uh talking about that marvel is uh planning to change iron man from tony stark to a 15 year old black girl uh named riri or riki or, or something of that nature and uh, it's going along with their new phase of trying to be more and i'm quoting politically correct uh, following along such lines as making Captain America, an alternate Captain America, mind you, because you also have Steve Rogers all of a sudden part of Hydra uh, the whole time, but also a, fe a black female Captain America, a female Thor, and a gay Asian Hulk. And it really, really... Wait, stop. Stop, stop. Go ahead. <laughs> Before you go any further with anything you're saying... Rewind just a tad bit on that. Marvel is looking to change this to be politically correct. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, and and thus far it's only for the comic books. I mean, it's not it's not supposed to be reflected yet in the uh, MCU with the with the movie. So I hope not. Cause, I mean, okay, I understand you want to change things up. I understand you want to give you a little bit of different of a genre for something that's been out there for. God knows how long at this point. You want to change things up a hair bit, but to change it up to an extreme like that makes no sense. But then again, if you're trying to create something different, something new, keep it in the comic book, leave it there, and if people are interested, they'll bite. If they're not interested, they're not going to bite. You put it in the theater, it's going to flop. 
End of story. There's, there's, don't even try to make it into a series on TV because it's going to flop. A Netflix, maybe a Hulu deal. That's about as far as I think it's going to make it. And it probably won't even make it there either. <laughs> All right, well, fair enough. I mean, I, when I saw the when I saw the uh, article, the the only thing that 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 uh, hit me, and quite honestly, I I, I, I want to go on record real quick and just simply say that I do not have an issue with having black characters. I do not have an issue with female characters. I do not have an issue with LGBT characters or transgender characters. I have no problem with that whatsoever. My issue in this particular instance is if you want to create a black character, a female character, a uh, LGBT or transgender type character, create it from scratch. Don't mess with established properties. Iron Man is Tony Stark. Odin is the, or excuse me, Thor is the son, not the daughter, the son of Odin. Uh, the Incredible Hulk is Bruce Banner. Mm. You know, uh, Captain America is Steve Rogers, and yes, Steve Rogers in the comic did die and was replaced by Falcon, who was a black man. But that's different. That's a storyline. The original Captain America died, and to honor him, the new Captain America donned the outfit. That's different. But how can you have a female character, regardless of black, white, whatever, who's only 15 years old, be Iron Man? Iron. It's not possible. Man, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I I don't I don't get what what uh, what Marvel is trying to do. I I don't see what's so hard about creating a brand new character for or a brand new superhero for this character, and of course keep it uh, respectful. Don't make her like Nubian goddess from uh, from Eastern Africa and play all the stereotypes. But give her a powerful female persona that is all her own, all original, and your readership or your your fan followings, particularly females, could have a positive brand new role model rather than pissing off three quarters of your clientele because they grew up for 60 years reading about Tony Stark putting on the Iron Man suit. Yes or no? Um, I actually completely and totally agree with everything you said. There is in no way, such shape, or form am I against anything as far as color, race, creed, what have you, sexual, you know, orientations, preferences. It, that's totally fine. If you want to do something in reference to anything, recreate, come up with originality, and if you have a transgender superhero, God bless you, go for it. If that's what you're into, you know, go for it. You know. Bruce Jenner, rock on. Have him be the next Supergirl. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do, but take something and make something original out of your new idea. You're not going to have a 15-year-old girl, black, white, Puerto Rican, great, don't matter, be the next Iron person. It's not going to make sense. <coughs> it just doesn't make sense. No, you're right, and... and... You know, that, that kind of started me on something else I was thinking about, and I kind of talked to you on the phone about this earlier, was there's a lot of things uh, that have been going on. Plain and simple, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of the Game of Thrones series on HBO. Uh, six seasons, it's been a phenomenal, okay. phenomenal series. Uh, it just had its series ender last Sunday. And or not series, but season ender, you know, and uh, a lot of people thought this was the best season that Game of Thrones has ever done. But the fact of the matter, I don't know how how into Game of Thrones you are. If at all, I'm not I'm not saying I'm against it. Just I don't know it. OK, well, with Game of Thrones, it's based off of a book written about 20 years ago. Well, five books, technically, uh, called the uh, Songs of uh fire and ice and uh actually the title for the show a game of thrones was the title of book one now when they did the seasons they tried to stay okay. they tried to stay very very true to the books uh well they changed some things for dramatic effect and you know just the typical typical thing 
But uh, by the end of season five, they had completed all five books of the series. And as such, and as such, when they did season six, the author of uh, Game of Thrones, uh, George Martin, uh, he uh, is still in production of making the book. So season six was kind of, you know, on the fly. It was completely on the fly. There was uh, George Martin kind of, you know, gave him some ideas on which way to go because that's where he's going with his book that he's trying to write. But all in all, it was in the hands of the writers and the producers to create season six. Now, the mixed emotion about this, the mixed emotion about this is the fact that season six deviated completely from any books because there was no source material. But it was considered the best season of the show. And that kind of got me wondering, you know, about the battle of media properties, be it movies or... That's all right, as long as you can still hear me. (laughs) Can you hear me? It broke off for like a hot second and came back and... Yeah, I can hear you. There's a lot, and I mean a lot of um, background noise. I just don't know where it's coming from. It's probably the good in your unit. I don't know, but it might be. Either way, I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm not getting it on this end, so as long as as long as hopefully it's not getting into the uh, recording, we're good. Uh, <laughs> but right. uh, uh, well, we'll find out after this shows over. That's it. You know, when I'm when I'm editing and put it up, either you're going to hear very crystal clear, like I'm hearing it, or you're going to hear what you know uh, Thorne is hearing, which is probably like <laughs> you know, and all that funny stuff. But, uh, Actually, it's exactly what I'm hearing. Is it really? <laughs> but uh, so it got me. It got, it, is. it got me thinking about like properties that, you know, people feel have deviated from their source material, be it comic book movies as opposed to comic books, be it like Star Wars and Disney taking it a different direction from the expanded universe. Uh, you know, Game of Thrones and any anything of that nature, even even movies like. Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, my girl's mother read that book, and you know, like typical women, they fucking loved it. You know, I don't get it. To me, it was just you know hard. Yeah, everyone in the library. <laughs> it was porn. It was porn. Let's call it what it was. It was porn. Men have been downgraded forever by women because of watching or or watching porn or reading Playboy, and then they're gonna sit there by poolside reading this. Filth book, <laughs> which became a movie, and a from lot of people heard, were pissed about the movie. Place, that's I gotta, yeah. You know, and a lot of people were pissed because it deviated from the book. And well, quite honestly, I've never read the book, and I've never seen the movie. I've had no interest in either. But I gotta imagine if it's anything like I've heard, there's no way they could do the movie unless it was rated triple X. I mean, <laughs> which wouldn't be in theaters. You know, so... Well, they made a movie, and then obviously it worked. <laughs> yeah, you know, so... It worked. Doesn't mean it worked. That's it, I it mean... It over. It worked. It sold millions of dollars worth of tickets. Well, let, look, you're a Star Wars fan. I'm a Star Wars fan. So we'll, we'll start with that there, as far as, like, books deviating from... Or movies deviating from books. You have George Lucas, who created this phenomenon. Okay, let's go to- you know, you have George Lucas who created this phenomenon uh, known it's as Star a Wars, spectacle. Yeah. American folklore, what have you. And he created episodes one through six. Uh, I'm not going right. to bother arguing which one was better because I know everybody hates the prequels and Jar Jar Binks and Midi Chlorian. So I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, that that's open right. for interpretation. But the creator created episodes one through six. After episode six, back in 1983, there was no Star Wars. Up until 99, when he decided to do the prequels, there was no Star Wars, except for a book deal Lucasfilm had with Del Rey Media. And Del Rey Books and Del Rey Media released hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of material telling a story of Star Wars from... The ending of Return of the Jedi, well into Luke's grandchildren's stories, and stories back from beginning of Phantom Menace to the beginning of the original Republic 10,000 years ago. 
some books were phenomenal. Some were terrible. But they were very, very much loved and received by the Star Wars fan base community. And then in 2000, I want to say 2014, George Lucas sold Lucasfilm to Disney and Kathleen Kennedy. And the first thing Disney turned around and said is the extended universe is no longer canon. We're going to take this a completely different direction. And that pissed off a lot of fans. Not this one. Not this one. But a lot of fans. Well, here's the question. Here's the question with that. What was the justifying reason or justification, if you will, of the new owner, quote unquote, taking a story and making a quick left turn with it? What was the reason for it? Something totally different? Something totally new? That's that's my take on it, is that they wanted to be able to tell a story that hasn't been told before. And to quote like the public relations guy for, for Lucasfilm, uh, Pablo Hidalgo, he said, you know, this Disney... Be cutting short. His, uh, his... I'm in the room, baby. He, his, uh... The extended universe is owned by Disney. Go to mommy now, you found me. You know, it is it is owned by Disney and it is owned by uh, uh, Lucasfilm Limited, and so they could cherry pick from from the source material as much as they want. But the fact of the matter is, they wanted to tell a story and create a story that is completely new and fresh. So that way, when you go to the theater and you see the movies, and you go to, and you go uh, see the uh, spinoff movies like Rogue One, it's not something you've seen or heard before. And I actually agree with that because I mean I'm one of those people that have read the books for many many years. I haven't read all of them, you know. Some of them really pissed me off, like Chewbacca dying by being crushed by a moon. Um, sorry, spoiler. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, we do have presence of a up and comer. Okay. In the room. So. All right. For folks in, who don't know, that um, means we have young your, ears in the room. Take, Go ahead. The take on Star Wars, the newest one that I have, the movie itself was. You can argue about it all day long. I thought it was a great movie. It made me a Star Wars fan again. Um. I cool. I feel that with what you said, having the new owner decide, let's make a left turn. They kind of made a left turn on a different road, but using the same vehicle as Lucas had. So Lucas is say he's driving a Lamborghini on Highway 55 and doing 80 miles an hour. Well, he just made a sharp turn onto Highway 22. That's fine. He still has that Lamborghini. He's still driving that thing at 80 miles an hour comfortably. So that's fine. Disney just decided to tell them to pull over. Pull over, give us the car. We're taking it. All right, fine. Here you go. It's still it's yours, whatever story case may be. But I guess what I'm trying to say is they may have taken a left turn. They may have gone a totally different direction, but they're still using the same basic vehicle to travel with that story to take the Star Wars legacy and move forward with it so they can continue to make movies with it. It's a close. Uh, I don't even want to spoil it, but you know what I mean. Certain people have to end and certain people have to begin. Well, let, 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 the vehicle I'll, 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 help you, I'll help you with this real quick here on, on that aspect. Spoiler alert for anybody who has not sure, in the past no, six to eight months of of the Force Awakens being out. Spoiler alert. We're going to talk about what happened in this movie because by now, if you haven't seen the movie, how can you even call yourself a Star Wars fan? Whether you like it or hate it is irrelevant. It's simply, if you have not even gone and seen it yet or picked it up at Walmart, you know, on 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 sale and watch this movie, then why are you even interested in a conversation about Star Wars? Go ahead. <laughs> say yeah. say your piece now. <laughs> no, no, by all means. I mean, um, okay, well then, why kill off Solo? 
no reason really to kill Solo off other than make his son relevant, in which case his son goes anyway. So what's the point? There was no point in that spot. No point in that scene whatsoever other than making the man ultra evil, which he already was. And for the statement that Leia made was bring our son back, okay, great, let's bring our son back. We all knew he wasn't coming back. So you're kind of going in a term where, dude, we already know what's happening. We already know it's not going to happen. You're making Captain Obvious happen in that movie. You knew he wasn't going to you know, turn face again, if you will. So why even bother wasting time or, or a script on that particular scene? Bring our stuff home. Duh! Well, you know, I think, I think with that, I think it's because they uh, – well, there's two reasons. One – Harrison Ford wanted Han Solo to pay the ultimate sacrifice back in the days of Empire Strikes Back when Han was frozen in the, in the, in carbonite. Han Solo didn't want, okay. or uh, Harrison Ford did not want Han Solo revived and returned to Jedi. He thought his sacrifice should mean something to the other heroes of the story. With J.J. Mm, okay. Abrams doing The Force Awakens, I believe... Okay. And I don't, I don't know how, how true or not true this could be. So, you know, don't shoot me in the comments section about, oh, that's not what happened at all or whatever else. But there's a very good chance that J.J. Abrams made a deal with Harrison of, hey, if you come back and play this one more time, we'll kill him off. You still there? I unfortunately think I've lost my co. Nope, okay. there he is. He's still there. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm still here, just trying to take care of baby. Oh, I get that. <clears throat> Hi, Cassie. <laughs> Jesus. So. Uncle Chris is saying hello. You peed yourself? Did you? Yeah, you did. Okay, go change your underwear. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, talk over. Uh, uh, Uncle Thor, uh, Daddy yeah. Thorn doing I his job. I apologize to the audience. I apologize to everyone. It's kind of like we did have an impromptu, and now my wife needs to go to sleep, which is fine. But my daughter's wide awake, and she's four, and I'm trying my best to but, things, but it's just not working out. That's fair. So you know, back back to what I was saying. You know, while you're handling your business, is that uh, besides Harrison probably making a deal with J.J. Abrams and saying, hey. If I come back and play Han Solo, I want Han to die. And I want his death to mean something. Uh, which leads me to point number two. I think Han Solo's death, its meaning was to show that Ben Solo, a.k.a. Kylo Ren, who was at that point not yet a Sith. He was dark side, but he was still plagued and haunted by the light side of the Force. He was still getting a pull of sympathy and of remorse and regret for his decisions until that point. And he was given a choice by his own father to do either the right thing or the wrong thing. And what he chose solidified him as a villain, as a bad guy, as an agent of the dark side. And quite honestly, probably could render him, especially in the uh, hearts and minds of, many of uh, Han Solo fans, irredeemable. And the one thing we do have to remember about Kylo is that he may be yeah. redeemable. He may be very redeemable, because let's think back. I, I know I'm going to mention the unholy prequel tri uh, trilogy here, but Darth Vader murdered every Jedi in the temple, including children. Children. I think that's a little worse than killing Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> Master Skywalker, there's too oh, many of them. Okay. What are we yeah, going I mean, to do? And you know, but see, the thing. did you notice too in this movie? Did you notice too in this movie though? Every single time he would do something, Solo's guy. What was his name again? What? Kylo Ren. What was Solo's kid's name? Kylo Ren. His real name was Kylo Ben Ren. Solo. Every time Kylo Ren tried to do anything, every time he tried to do something. The first thing out of someone's mouth was, you mean Darth Vader. And I went, wow! <laughs> well, there's only one Darth Vader. Well, that's it, yeah. You can't, I'm a huge Darth Vader man. You cannot, just, you can't duplicate him or imitate him. It's just not possible. Well, I hope they there's can. You can duplicate it. I hope they can. I don't know if you've been keeping up with the, the, the new movie coming out this December, Rogue One. 
Rogue One, a Star Wars story. That'd be really nice. If they, all right. It takes place right before if episode they four. Do it? Right. Okay. There's. Let's see. Darth Vader was his own entity. Darth Vader was his own thing, his own phenomena. If they were to do something where another Darth would come into effect, it would have to be pretty damn deep, if you will, and pretty super dark above and beyond anything that Darth Vader has ever done to be able to be even more evil or even more powerful. It would have to be ten times more. Now, the only thing I could think of is that girl becoming a Darth because she's so damn powerful. Ray? You think you think Ray will turn dark side? Oh wow! Yeah. Oh well, that 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 that's a good pot. I mean that that is a that is a theory on on a lot of social media is that uh, Ray would turn to the dark side and Kylo would actually be redeemed to stop her. So that's a very that's a which good... would make sense because she's so much more powerful than he is. Well, that's, that's fair enough. Think about how much more powerful she was to everybody else. There's your Darth. And that goes also into, if you want to kick back a minute, we, you mentioned earlier, I know it has, one has nothing to do with the other, but you're talking about how Marvel wanted to do something with already established characters with a different genre of person, different stereo, different types of person. Well, Disney can take a different a totally different sex and turn it into something much more than Darth Vader has ever been. And they have it. They have the opportunity to do it. Well, it's actually, it's actually kind of funny because one of the, am one, I wrong? No, you're not. And one of the, one of the funny uh, th- fan theories that are going around is the rumor that Ray is not only like Luke's daughter, you know, basically a Skywalker, because that's one of the biggest questions that Force Awakens left everybody mm-hmm. is who is her parents? Why is she so strong with the Force? And one of the working theories, I don't know how good it is or not good it is, is that they're talking about her being a reincarnation of Anakin Skywalker. In other words, a new chosen one. <laughs> Well, then there you have it right then there. Enough said, enough done. Um, I knew nothing about that whole issue. Um, but that then, if that's being said, and I didn't know anything about it, then it fall, it'll fall right into it. If you're a Star Wars fan of any kind, you're not going to see it coming, but you will. You just have to give her, a character, an opportunity to just, something drastic has to take place where she, it isn't worth it. Just turns. Maybe she's like lose a limb, or whatever. Maybe she betrays Luke. Remember, at the, see, there you go. Why at, not? At the end of Force Awakens, she's uh, Ooh. she's there being trained, or well, getting ready to start her training with you know, wordless Luke, the uh, hide and seek champion, <laughs> you know, who was never seen again until yeah. two minutes till the end of the movie. And never says one word, but maybe she does. Did maybe she, she actually hand it to Did she actually hand she, she it She handed it out to him, but he never grabbed it, at least not on camera. Okay. I'm still so trying to I'm still trying to figure out I, if he even took it from her. Well, I'm still trying to figure out the look he was giving. He never hand, she never handed. I'm still trying to figure out the look he was giving because when he turned yeah. around and looked at her in that 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 lightsaber, he had a a mixed look of first off I I definitely saw recognition. So if nothing else, I think she used yes. to at least be a former student of his uh, of his Jedi Temple that Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren had destroyed. Okay. I I, I fully believe it, and I force was used to uh, kind of. Erase her memory of it, you know, which would explain why she knows how to use the force, but doesn't really know she knows, you know, uh, that's my first theory and clue on it. Um, She did, she did look great. You know, uh, my second thing is there was heavy sorrow in Luke's face when he was looking at her and looking at that lightsaber. He, he had this, well, he knows who she, I, I, I fully believe he knows who she is. 
And I think he, I think he recognizes her. And I think you're right. There may be a little bit of fear there. It may be a fear of her. It may be a fear of what she represents. It may be a fear of thinking to himself, God, I'm needed again. You know what I mean? Because he ran off after the Jedi Temple was hey. destroyed and right. hit himself. There had to have been a reason. Here you go. He's fearing and he has to return out of his solitude to redo things, if you will. But what will happen if he does go back and she winds up turning on him? Well, that, that's already happened where his own father turned on him. Well, right. And that that's... Uh, uh, that's pretty much where I'm going with it, you know, is that, you know, he, yeah. he, he, he knows the Skywalker lineage and quite honestly in the Skywalker slash now solo lineage, he's kind of a rarity. He's the only one who didn't turn, you know, even in the books, you know, so many of the Skywalkers wind up walking right. the line or crossing the line to the dark side. You know, and Luke is one of those constants that, like... You know what? Watch. Watch. Yep. She's going to turn, and he's going to have to face her. And she's going to beat him, which turns... For her, for him to go over, for him to beat her, it destroys everything you're creating. If she beats him, which will it can happen, if she beats him, that extends movies to unprecedented limits of, well, who is going to be her? Darth Ray. Who's going to be, well, I'm not saying Ray, but who's going to be this new Darth that is more powerful than Darth Vader himself? If Luke is now gone, Han's gone, there's nobody around. Well, Han didn't have the Force, but who has the Force that is going to be able to match up against her? Nobody. Well, see, that's... Somebody's going to have it. That that that's kind of that's kind of you know the thing that that I'm I'm kind of looking at because right now in this universe uh, of the Force Awakens that they created, there is no Sith. The Sith died with Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. Mm -hmm. But Grand uh, Grand Leader mm -hmm. Snoke is training the Knights of Ren to be dark side users, not necessarily Sith, but dark side users. Who is Snoke? Is he a Sith and nobody knows it? Is he the reincarnation of somebody, which has been many, many speculative rumors? Uh, is there going to be a new character introduced in 8 with some of the new actors coming in that winds up being a Sith Lord who finishes Kylo's training and actually turns him to an actual Sith Lord? Because right now he's just a dark side user. He's and an apprentice at that, but he's not actually a Darth. He's not part of the Lords of Sith. All right. So instead of the Emperor turning Anakin to Darth Vader, having, for lack of better terms, um, Darth Ray turning this guy, if you're speaking, which I can't whatever his name was, into a Sith, into another Emperor, where the higher up is actually following. She has more power he follows her but he guides her I'm doing it this way do that and said calm down calm down no you will listen to me the emperor followed darth but if you remember the emperor was so happy when Dar anakin became darth because he knew he was stronger than him am i wrong was, wasn't darth stronger oh yeah darth was the uh, strongest force mm -hmm. user uh well it depends if you if you look at the extended universe Darth Vader was the strongest one since, like, Darth Bane and Darth Revan and, you know, some of the previous Darths of the war of, of the stories. If you look at it from the new canon, then Darth Vader was the strongest there ever was. There, there has never been a Force user like Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. Right. And now she'll be the next one. With any luck, this hope... My, in our opinions, anyway, my opinion, this is hopefully, I'm a big fan of the bad guy. To see her turn would be a thrill. Don't know why I'm a big bad guy fan, just watching her turn would be great, and have her be feared by the top dog 
and him join her and have no choice. And then they start it basically all over again, just a different gender. Oh my god, that'd be great. You're, re- you're rewriting everything pretty much all over again. Well, it would. But it, you're not taking the old story. You're just putting a new one. Well, it would. It would follow old formulas. Uh, one thing Star Wars has always been famous for is having that one plot twist. That one twist that nobody saw coming. Yes. And, of course, I'm referring back to uh, the end of Empire where Darth Vader, you know, professes to Luke, Anakin did not get killed by the dark side. I am your father. You know, and it left everybody yeah. in shock forever. Of, oh, my God, is he lying? Is he telling the truth? You couldn't wait for Jedi to find out what, what this deal was. There's a very good possibility right. they would throw a red herring like that of even if she's not permanently dark side, maybe she does fall to the temptation and is redeemed in some way in the ninth movie yet to be titled. <laughs> very, very possible. Very, 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 <laughs> very, very, very possible. And I can buy it for a dollar or two or maybe movies are 15, right? I don't even have movies that have much theater anymore. Uh, I, I know when I yeah, went I to buy that. I know when I went to see Force Awakens, I spent twenty dollars on my ticket, but that was for like IMAX viewing, so give or take. <laughs> okay, so you went for a big thing. Well, I it's, waited for it's it. Star you Wars. Watched there and enjoyed it. <laughs> well, it's Star Wars. I had to see the big thing. You know I what know. I mean? But again, I lost my I lost my interest in Star Wars and then regained it with that movie. So that must tell you how good it is. No, that's exactly it, and I, I was going to state that. I was going to state that, is that you were somebody who was, a, as much as me, a huge Star Wars fan. I remember your old apartments back in our early 20s where you had, like, Darth Vaders everywhere and, you know, everything in the nature, and then all of a sudden one day you were just like, ah, I'm over Star Wars, you know, and then when I came to you about this idea about doing this podcast, I'm like, well, we'll talk about everything. We'll, I, we'll talk about this, that, and the other don't worry, I'll be kind of light on the Star Wars. I know you're not into it anymore. And you're like, actually, I saw episode seven and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it if, was it, good. if there's not a testament for episode good. seven being a decent Fact. Star Wars film, that's it right there is it redeemed an old fan. <laughs> so. Yeah. It did redeem an old fan, definitely. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean. Kinda like, um. I was going to say now. It don't make any... Oh, well. No big deal. Well, getting getting back on topic at hand, though, you know, because we kind of went off on a Star Wars uh, rant, is I wanted to get your opinion and your view about when intellectual properties, franchises, be it TV, be it uh, movies, or whatever that is based off of a book or some sort of source, source material, uh, what's your view okay. about it deviating from it is that a good thing or a bad thing? Do, do you feel that it depends on the book that it's coming from? A uh, perfect example, I would say a bad example would be uh, Battlefield Earth, which was a phenomenal, phenomenal book uh, by L. Ron Hubbard. I mean, it was good enough to inspire a crazy religion in Scientology. I don't care if I insult any Scientologists. Oh, dude. But... It was it. The, the point that being is, it was a wonderful, wonderful book, but that John Travolta movie was garbage, absolute garbage. It was more than just. Uh, it was less than garbage. I mean, garbage looked better than that movie did, and to inspire such a belief, and I want to leave it at that word, belief, is crazy. Yes, people have their beliefs, and they worship what they want to worship, and they and, and got you know. I, I'm, I believe in God, um, and I'm not afraid to say what I, how I feel. People feel differently. That's your choice. <laughs> that movie created an entire um, belief of Scientology, which, okay, makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. But the movie was so horrible. Oh, my God. I can't even stop saying how bad that movie was. All right, so. so. How, how can you create something from that? Oh, my Lord. Well, if there was ever a movie that I feel deserves a reboot, 
it would have to be Battlefield Earth because, again, basing on the source material, I've read the book. I read it without going nuts and saying, hey, I want to be a Scientologist, but I read it as a science fiction fan and read it for what it was, a science fiction piece of literature. And quite honestly, the book was beautiful. It was really, really well written, had a great story to it, a lot more to it than the, than the, the, the first movie ever showed. If any series or any movie ever deserved a reboot, I would say it would be Battlefield Earth. But, you know, the, the, the question I pose to you is, how do you feel about movies, TV shows, video games, whatever, that are based on a book source material and when they deviate from said book, doesn't matter if it's comic book or, or short story or... All right. How I feel. Okay. Um, because I'm not a huge book, comic book type of person, um, I'm going to give this the best I can. I have read... You know what? It's been a long time since I've read really any kind of serious books, but... Alright, here we go. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cartoon growing up. Great cartoon. Fair enough, yeah. We'll um, go back. That's the only thing I can think of right now from the top of my head. April O'Neil and Casey Jones. I just had this conversation with my wife and kid the other day. This exact conversation about that. When they deviate away from it to change things up, What's the point of making the film if you're going to change the film, if you're going to change things? Megan Fox is, whatever you want to call her as she it may be, hot, ugly, whatever. To me, she's hot. April O'Neil is not a smoking hot babe. April O'Neil is a an Amy Adams type. Quirky, cute, girl next door, smaller, you know, red hair, short at that, not the sex appeal thing. Casey Jones was a long-haired guy with teeth missing, a hockey fan, and basically a bum, but defending like a vigilante would defend. Wonderful. The movie made Casey Jones a basically a runner cop and made her a reporter as well, but the sexy, hot, I want to be with a have you, to deviate away in that particular movie, I was just saying, okay, let's try to not think about what Casey Jones was back in the day, what April O'Neil was back in the day, and think about just, it's Ninja Turtles, and Troy the Ninja Turtle movie for what the Ninja Turtle movie is. And it was very distracting to have April O'Neil being the sexy deal thing when she's supposed to be a girl next door type thing. Okay, well, let, let's, very, let, let's, let's clarify just for people who are listening, and after we clarify, it actually brings in a second question here. Uh, you are speaking of the newest Ninja Turtle movies with Megan Fox and the CGI Turtles and uh, the Michael Bay films, yes. basically. You're not speaking yes, of the... Yes, yes. Uh, Phenomenal the, movies. You're not speaking of the uh, Ninja Turtles that... Uh, that the, the That were puppeted by Jim Henson's workshop, right. All right, well that... No, I'm, I'm referring to the newest ones that came out. I'm referring to the new ones with Stephen Mell, Megan Fox... I'm referring to the ones that were in CGI, like you said. Spectacular, phenomenal, great movies. I can't argue that the movies were great, in my opinion. I love them. You just deviated away from the story too much. The puppetry ones from back in the day with Jim Henson, you know, Puppetry um, Factory, they were very, very good for what they were, but they stuck with what the Ninja Turtles were from the cartoon we watched and loved from back in the day. This new stuff... As great as the movies are, they've deviated away a little too much with certain things, and it just didn't make any damn sense. I went, that didn't happen. I don't remember that happening. Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, so that, that kind of an answers the uh, the question I was going to ask, is which one do you think was truer to the source material, the, uh, the 90s Ninja Turtles or the modern incarnation? 90s. 90s? Okay. All right, right on. Yeah, the back in the day, the puppetry. <laughs> Even though I watched uh, five minutes ago, my daughter was watching the time, the thing, I think they traveled in time, whatever, I never saw the third one. Okay. And the puppetry one, I'm going, okay, corny as they may be to, to today for by TA standards, that's still truer to what we're watching now. But hmm. I'm not going to not watch it because it's not true to the, 
you know, the, the cartoon from 1980, 90, whatever it was. Right. I'm just not going to stay away from it. Okay. Um, if you were given a choice of any franchise that was out there, be it cartoon, book, movie, whatever, and you would see it come back, rebooted, remade, whatever the case may be, what would you want to see come back and why? Oh, my lord. Um, I actually thought about this a hundred times <laughs> over. I thought about Ghostbusters without women actually making it, you know, Peter Bankman and Egon and, you know, Ray and those guys, you know, the actual Ghostbusters. I thought about remaking that. I thought about Police Academy. But the only two that I could think about remaking it, but in the same breath, why? Well, What's I mean, to introduce it to a new, uh, a new, a new audience. I mean, you know, you're mentioning things like Police Academy. There's many people who could be even listening to this podcast right now have no idea about those movies. They were made in the 80s starring Steve Goodenberg and, you know, and, and stuff of that nature. And these are people, actors that you and I grew up with and thought they were hilarious, thought they were, you know, great movies. They, they uh, But they are kind of dated. You know, you can't sit back yeah. now and watch them and get the same sense of real life mixed with comedy as you could 20 years ago when you watched these for the first time. You know, um, good point. No, you, get, you, you have a very good point there. I mean, I would love to see Ryan Reynolds play Mahoney. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is Mahoney, so. Quick wit, wisecrack mouth. So you want to see Police Academy go R, hard R rated? <laughs> <laughs> um, sure, why not? I mean, it was hysterical, man, and I'm sure it'd be funny now, but to. You know what, though? Think about this. Let me ask you a question. All right, I'm listening. Do you feel, in your opinion, do you feel that with the way times have changed, uncontrollably, of course, that our world, our society as we know it, has gone, one, way too sensitive to everything, but has yet gone to the extreme of hardcore appeal of sexual things, whether it be a hot chick, a hot guy, transgender, whatever it's going to be, video games, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. You think it's going to soften, yet in the same breath, going extreme, hardcore with things? Well, if, I, if I'm interpreting your question correctly, yes. I think everybody has become way too overly sensitive. Uh, to steal a quote from, uh, from a good friend of both of ours, D.C. Lori. I'm offended at how easily mm -hmm. people are offended. You know, um, it, it yeah. really it really is a sad world where you think about, like, the 18-year-olds of World War II who, you know, got drafted into the military and are considered the greatest generation who ever lived, you know, storming the beaches of Normandy and everything else and, and being the types of people that we all grew up envisioning ourselves to be. And then you look at the kids yeah. nowadays, and 18-year-olds need safe places because words hurt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, life sucks. Get a helmet. You know, yeah. there, things are not going to go your way. Words are going to hurt. Your feelings are going to get hurt. You know, things are going to suck more often than they're going to be great. But how you suck up and deal with it is what really defines you as a human being as opposed to, well, I don't like it, so make it go away. You know, you, you can't live like that because you create a world. And I'm, I'm trying to censor myself because I know your daughter's still in the room, you know, but, yeah, can't get her to shit. but you're creating a, a world of Mary's. And I'm, I'm you know, I forgive yeah. me if I sound like I'm, I'm picking on the women here, but I'm also speaking at, for women as well. But on, the, but on the opposite, wusses, yeah. But on the opposite end of the coin, when you were speaking about like becoming more hardcore about uh, certain things and everything else, I think the reason of being is because this generation, which I don't know who originally dubbed the phrase, but I wholeheartedly believe in it, is you know calling this generation Generation Me. And the reason that I absolutely agree with that rendition of this generation is it is so materialistic. This generation, yeah. all they care about is 
what name brand sneakers and and t-shirts they wear uh yeah. what mu trendy music is the popular style today what is the trendy word usage uh i can only text and speak in, in emoticons because there is no social construct anymore uh i can't be oh, friends with you unless it benefits me in some way and yes. you lift me up Forget if I do anything for you, you've got to lift yeah. me up. It, it, yeah. it, it, it's so self-centered, this generation, and it, it's it's sickening. It's, it quite honestly is. It's, it's To me, it's one of the things that kids are so in, <coughs> involved in social media. They have their phones in their hands 24-7. They wake up with the phone in their hand. They go to bed with the phone in their hand. They find a way of taking the shower when they're taking a the dump. They have the phone in their hand. It's constant Facebook, this, that, and the third. Whatever happened back in the 90s and the 80s when you and I were in high school in the 90s and, you know, you wanted to go talk to a girl. We had a beep on our side. That was cool then, a beeper, for God's sake. <laughs> then you still have to go to a telephone to go make a phone call because you got paged or you got beeped. If you're on call back in the day when we were doing – well, we're still doing it. But maintenance, you get a call, you have to find a phone. Well, now we have the luxury of phones. But then it was, hi, my name is you know Mike, or hi, my name is you know Wild. Hello, I'm Joe. And you have to accept the fact that the girl you've been going, oh, hello, or ew, get away from me. You have to accept that. Today, you, hey, let me get your number. She goes, ew, it's like, okay, fine, piss off then, lady. It is what it is, but they'll go, well, give me your phone, or let me see you on Facebook. Or you go on Facebook, and you see a hot chick or a you know, girl sees a guy, and then you friend request them and start messaging them back and forth. That's dating. What happened to going to a movie and getting dinner? <laughs> oh, come on. You're talking about a world where back when we were – looking for people to date i mean yet the, the audience ha that's listening to us has to understand uh mike and i are both pretty much ready to hit our 40s if not already in our 40s i believe you are already 40, I'm 40. That's yeah you are 40, 40 and i'm six months away so we're old okay <laughs> we'll just call it simply <laughs> we're old all right and uh, well numerically we're old uh <laughs> we're old i'm losing my hair i'm looking at this camera now i'm actually my phone's gonna die shortly too, but that's all the story itself. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get ready to wrap this up here, but uh, you know, in 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 the fact that when we were in our teenage years and our early twenty years, and we were looking for our respective others, and you know, people that we've dated over the years, we went out and asked people out. We went to the bars, we went to the mall, we went to the whatever, and we saw a girl we liked. We approached them. We dealt with the fear of their ga gathered around their friends uh cackling to each other and it's like oh god is she gonna reject me in front of all her friends and i'd be the joke for the next hour or whatever else nowadays you have like you said social media you have dating sites you have text messaging there it, it, it t completely takes away the human connection to it and what i think is hilarious or what's this right and what i think is hilarious is like I just stated, when you approached a woman back in our day, you were so afraid she was going to reject you, whether it was in front of your friends or in front of her friends or just the fact that you're face to face with somebody. There was something so different about whether she's going to say yes or no. And you had to stir up this amount of courage in you to be able to even mm -hmm. walk up to them like, like they're goddesses or something of that nature. Yeah. You know, and then nowadays with the text messaging, the social media – Hey, you want to go out? If she says no, you're like, man, whatever, you know, or if she says yes, you're like, cool, but it really doesn't have the same connection. And what I think is hilarious about that is how many of the girls you see on social media bitch about how they don't feel like uh, as much of a connection or or that the man yeah. is trying hard enough to, to right. win her affections. It's like. You're doing it over social freaking media. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I drive, dude, check this out. I drive Uber, okay, on the weekends. Right. And um, it, it's, it's, you can meet some good people. You meet some not good, so good people. It is what it is. The people I've met, I, two girls get in the car and they said, hi, I said, hey, how you doing, whatever, whatever. Just, you know, exchange pleasantries. And we're kind of taking it. And he said, find single men. I said, 
not a problem. I'm sure there's something right or somewhere you can find, you know, Rittenhouse Square, Second and Market. I mean, there's bars and, you know, social clubs all over the place. Right. And then they got into, well, I found a guy on Facebook. And I go, really? So the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, was the picture real? <laughs> was this guy showing you a picture of himself in his 20s and he's actually in his 50s and he's, you know, fatter than God knows what. He looks like basically Fat Albert. And he's really showing himself looking like young Brad Pitt. You can't trust social media. <clears throat> Walk up to a guy, hi, you're cute, I like you. And then his wife walks up and says, I'll get away. But anyway, that's right. the story. <laughs> yeah, enough, enough about some of your personal life experiences. Uh, <laughs> oh, <why are> you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we are going to go ahead and uh, get, wrap this first inaugural show up. Uh, unfortunately, our other guests did not get off in time to be able to uh, join in on the conversation, but hopefully we can get them in on the next one. Uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, start off by saying that I am going to be posting this not only as a podcast through uh, Podcast Garden, uh, which is the same podcast company that I use to put up uh, America's Pop Culture Magazine's podcasts. But uh, I'm also going to be putting this audio with a visual picture uh, together to upload it to uh, YouTube. And I will be posting all of these links uh, through my social medias, both on Twitter, uh, which you can find me at uh, ChrisWild77 on Twitter, and you could find me on facebook.com slash wild high. Uh, or, yeah, facebook.com slash wild high. So, you know, send me a friend request and uh, check out the, the things that are coming. I'll also link in Mr. Uh, Amade uh, Mike Amadeus Thorne here. Uh, where can they find you? And tell them what you're going to be up to in your life uh, well, besides I'm on normal. Facebook. Obviously, I'm on Facebook. I don't have Twitter or any of those other things. I'm on Facebook under facebook.com slash, I think it's Anthony Ferris. Um, shooting, it is what it is. Um, that's pretty much the only social media I'm on is Facebook. Okay. All right. And uh, what are you doing with yourself? You're, you're, you're still involved with the wrestling world? Yeah, actually, it's once a month. I moved down for two years. And then I got back in. And my wife encouraged me to get back in. And now it's once a month I'm in there with the hopes for more, but I'm 40. I'm not going to keep pushing it. You know, there's injuries, there's things that are going to still be there and never go away. But I still love doing what I've always loved to do, and that is professional wrestling. And maybe next uh, show we can get into that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Just, you and I both have a history in it, so why not? Uh, do you have any up-and-coming up and shows? Yeah, do you have any shows you want to um, promote or anything? It's, it's, well, sure, sure, sure. Actually, there's a show coming up this weekend, this Saturday night. It's in Gilbertsville at the Zerns Farmer's Market, uh, Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania. Um, it's for Worldwide Wrestling Alliance, Dino you know Santa. Um, come on out. It's a great time. I believe it's 7 o'clock, 7.30, something like that. All right. It's only like $10, $13. I mean, it's not that big a deal. And the show's great. Late. Late. Well, there you go. Who are you taking on that night? If I knew that, I'd tell you. <laughs> but I can't tell you this. I have every intention on doing what I do best, run my mouth. I will be running my mouth so serious. <laughs> <laughs> if I get my ass kicked for it. Well, on that, on that note, uh, what's that? Go ahead. No, no, it's talking to my daughter. I can't believe she's still up at this time. Oh, okay. Well, then, on that note, we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to thank everybody for checking out this podcast, the inaugural one, first one, four more to go uh, this season to see if it's uh, something that uh, I assume Mr. Thorne and I will continue on with. We are also talking about doing another project that deals more in-depth with pro wrestling, uh, more details on that to come as we uh, develop it together. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more of a roundtable Uh the next coming show uh i'm hoping to do it within within the next week uh and have it up for you guys to listen to but until then this has been breaking the fourth wall uh i again am chris wild thank you very much for listening and thank you very much to my guest mike thorne today uh for talking star wars and a whole bunch of other stuff with me <laughs> thank you very much mike hey, great time my man it was fun it was fun thank you so much and uh to everybody out there 
um, be safe, be helpful, and uh, see you guys. Or hopefully you can hear us next time. And real quick, if you guys have anything, that, uh, topics you want us to discuss, again, this is going to be up on Facebook. This is going to be up on uh, – YouTube, this is going to be up on Twitter. Shout out some comments to us. Leave us your questions on what you want us to discuss, and uh, I will be reading those and bringing them to the panel in the next show. Hey, Cassie. Mm -hmm. Say hi to everybody listening. <laughs> or just smile at me. <laughs> All right, thank you, very, thank you very much, guys. This has been Breaking the Fourth Wall. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new podcast uh, started today for, uh, well, for America's uh, pop culture magazine, Breaking the Fourth Wall. I'm your host, Chris Wilde, and with me right now, let me go ahead and kill the intro music here. Uh, joining me right now is Mike Amadeus Thorne. Hey, Mike, how's it going, man? 